Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered looking through web pages for perfect sized mock up for your design? There are a lot of them available on the internet, but sometimes we can't get exact dimension ratio matching our product packaging. I faced this problem recently, so I made my own editable mock up template in Adobe Illustrator. You can do it in Photoshop too, but final rendering there requires a bit of technical knowledge in CGI lighting and faster GPU, which could be absent in case you are beginner or you are not that much into CGI. And of course, we can't forget Adobe Dimension, which is game changer for packaging designers. But assuming you don't own full Adobe package, I'll continue in Illustrator. Create an empty document with any dimension, 72 ppi and RGB color mode. 300 ppi only if you want to print it. Import your packaging design that can be vector or raster image. If you are importing images then you may notice image getting smaller on import. That's due to ppi difference. Select all the target images and scale them up until you see 72 ppi here. So they'll be at 100% scale in 72 ppi document. Lay them out as typical unwrapped box. If your design is in one piece, please break it down into separate parts. No need to place side by side like me. I just like my document organized. You could have various parts depending on your design. Here I am using a book cover from the internet for demonstration. So I have a front cover and a spine. Convert all the design pieces into symbol one by one. Shortcut key is F8. Give proper name. Export type doesn't matter. Make it dynamic symbol. Registration point center. Actually I don't know if it makes any difference here. Wow, we got an error. It says a symbol cannot contain an image which is linked outside illustrator. So those images need to be embedded in document. Select all the linked content. Linked images have cross on them. You can see linked file written here too. Press this embed button. Now again try turning it into symbol. Done. Same thing for other pieces. Half part is done. Now make your artboard bit larger than the design. I'll create a very subtle gradient for infinite backdrop. Then logged it. Now create a rectangle of exact size of the front cover. Now look at the width of the spine. Remember that for a minute. Select the object. Go to effects. 3D. Extrude and Bevel Very first thing you should do is add extrude amount same as spine width, which is 260 pixels. Now we got the same sized 3D shape as physical product. Second important thing is perspective. I have seen many beginners not taking this into consideration. Everything has a perspective angle depending on the viewpoint. Here I am setting it to 28 degrees. Higher the amount, more distortion you will see. Set this X, Y and Z rotation. 
you can use these presets as a starting point. Sometimes it's easy to turn the box from here, but when it gets tricky, use scroll wheel on these boxes for accurate rotation in one particular axis at a time. Placement is done. If you click on more option, you will see basic lighting features. Right now this is only affecting the base color. Now click on map art. First of all, enlarge this box as much as you can. Here you can see total surface count of the box which is 6. Whichever surface is selected here gets highlighted red in the artboard. Front surface is selected. I'll map a symbol on that which we have already made. If symbol fits automatically then that's good. If not, you can use this scale to fit button. If you check this box, symbol will be affected by lighting effects. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. You won't get cast shadow though. This checkbox hides geometry. It's useful when you want to apply small sticker or something on transparent object or in similar situations. Change the selected surface. Select the symbol. Here comes the problem. If surface native rotation and symbol's native rotation doesn't match, scale to fit won't help. There are two ways to deal with that. Option A, just go to symbol edit mode and rotate this piece by 90 degree. Or option B, scale, rotate and fit manually, whichever way is suitable for you. Alert. You won't be able to rotate this piece if it's larger than the working area. In that case, make it tiny first, then rotate and fit. When you want to remove symbols from mapping, you can select none from here or click clear button. Once you are happy with placement, then you can add contact shadow. For that, I am creating a black rectangle on bottom, eyeballing the perspective. Keep watching, later I will tell you how to change these covers in a single click. I'll duplicate this so you can clearly see the effects I add on to that. First add offset path to bring the edges outside about 3 pixels. Then add Gaussian blur about 20 pixels. Make sure object doesn't get vanished completely. Looks like product is floating. Select the fill layer and duplicate it by clicking on this button. If that doesn't work then just drag and drop onto this button. Decrease blur amount to very low about 3 to 4 pixels. Turn down opacity to half means 50%. Duplicate this fill layer again, decrease blur even more, 2 pixels and opacity to 30%. Contact shadow is done. You can tweak the blur amount, opacity and path offset value as you like.
Now see the magic. If you want to change the cover, all you need to do is hold Alt key in Windows and Option key in Mac. Then drag and drop artwork onto the symbol. Boom! Symbol changed. So does the box. I'll do the same for the spine. Before replacing, just make sure cover size is the same as the symbol content. The same method can be applied to cylindrical objects. Instead of extrude and bevel, you have to select revolve. Calculate symbol's total width using this 2 pi r formula. These are lightning parameters I have set for this cylinder. And one last thing before ending the video. If you want to involve Photoshop instead of making symbol and 3D mapping here, then this stage is the best as the base image. You can take all three layers background, object and light overlay separately to Photoshop and then work from there. I have this dedicated video on how to do exactly that in Photoshop. My subscribers loved that video, so I guess you will do too. This is good starting point to apply your creativity on. If you enjoyed the video then please give a like and do share and subscribe for more videos in future. Thank you so much for watching this.